Um, hi, everyone. My name is Jen Telefer. I'm the Academic Programs Coordinator at the School of Architecture, Planning and Landscape. Welcome to our information session. We appreciate you joining us. Um, please note we are recording this for future use. Uh, it would be great if you could turn on your camera so we can see you, um, but it's up to you. So before we get started, we would like to acknowledge and pay tribute to the traditional territories of the Peoples of Treaty 7, which includes the Blackfoot Confederacy, comprising the Siksika, Kaguni, and Kainai First Nations, as well as the Sudina First Nation and the Stony Nakoda, including the Chiniki, Bearspaw, and Wesley First Nations. The city of Calgary is also home to Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3. By the signing of Treaty 7 in 1877, the university recognizes that we are all treaty people. Catherine Hamill is our Associate Dean of our Architecture Program and will provide some background on architecture and outline the path to becoming an architect. After that, we will have a question and answer period and for your questions, you can enter them in the chat or turn on your mic and we'll address them that way. Thanks, Catherine. Hi, there's a few people in the waiting room also. Yeah. Hi, everyone, welcome. Um, well, black squares. Uh, <laughs> it's a bit odd talking to just your names, but it's still uh, nice to have your ears. As uh, Jen mentioned, I'm the one of the instructors in the in the in the program, and I've been here a while. So I'm just going to take you a bit of a through an informal tour. I'm going to screen share to show you some of uh, some of what our faculty is about in, uh, as a larger uh, idea, and then. Um, maybe um, talk a bit about architecture as a profession. Um, and then if you have any questions, we can go from there. So as a, as a faculty, we're uh, what's I think very exciting as a faculty in terms of uh, studying design is uh, we have planning, landscape and um, and architecture as programs. But what's really exciting, I think for me, as uh, thinking about design is we think through making, we're not, we're, um, we build things, we build things at all kinds of scales. Um, even the planning program is a form-based one. So whether thinking of the city, the environment, the spaces around the uh, thing um, to the buildings themselves, which is where in architecture we, we focus. Um, what's we we're exploring all the time we're thinking of the future we're shaping the environments that people are going to live in um, and there are issues that there are a lot of things to resolve but what's really nice with design is really problem solvers who don't focus on the problem but really explore explore possible solutions through a series of iterations where you do uh, different experiments. So the teaching, the learning, the way we work in the faculty, that's how we explore what is relevant. We, of course, some things we know, but in terms of how to move future uh, to in the future to building those things. So if any of you cook, it's a bit like cooking, but with a bit more uh, serious implications, because obviously designing is a very serious thing, though there's, uh, you'll see a lot of the images we'll show uh, are student work. Um, as a student, the, the focus is learning. It's a bit, I always tell the students in first year, it's like mental stretching, um, learning how to do that where you don't have a formula, you're given some parameters in a course and you move forward. And, um, and then go from there, you then do the, you know, there's a practice in the field. That's the, so there are a lot, it's, it's not, a, it's not, I get my prof, uh, degree and just move forward, but that's where it's really, exciting we have students like we're entrepreneurial people create practices you can work in the field in a lot of different scales and in uh, uh, ways which maybe we'll talk about so there's a lot of thinking what we call thinking with your hands but that also these days implies some uh, amazing technology uh, we're at a very exciting time both because we need to make a lot of considerations about the environment about equity in the environment about the way we use materials, but also we have a lot of new tools that are providing new ways for us to think and to explore and to then build. Um, so those are some of when you see images, those are students that are, you get certain courses that teach you certain basic things like structures, how you do it in the building, but then you, th there's a lot of different things where you have to manufacture things yourself. So if you're somebody who likes to likes materials, likes to 
make things uh, that's this is definitely a, a way and it and uh, the other a really nice thing is there's a range um it it appeals to a lot of different personalities because parts of uh, design and, and architecture is extremely pragmatic and practical a building has to stand up but other parts are much more theoretical where people are exploring different concepts and how they affect people so there's quite an amazing range in terms of responding to the different personalities. Um, that's where we, with our school also, where what's uh, one of the strengths is the interdisciplinarity that we do have a school that has architecture and planning and landscape in one area. We do run uh, some studios where students interact so you can take classes because the, the thinking is a bit different. As I said, we do think at different scales with a bit different methodologies. And so that's something that is not common where you have them all under one roof. We also have um, two, two campuses, uh, two campus spaces. We, we have the main campus where we're at the University of Calgary, where we have an incredible shop. So when I talk about building, we have uh, one of the best shops um, with three people there uh, who work, who help you. We have 3D printing machines. Uh, we have also still some tools for wood, for, because with wood, with mass timber, we have a CNC machine, which uh, you know is a machine where if you don't know, you put in, you program the, the things now, instead of drawing things, you're drawing them digitally. And then you put the material and the machine will route and work things for you. So it's, it's quite incredible. But we also have um, downtown, I don't know if, uh, if you are, I'm assuming most people are in Calgary, is we do have the city building lab, which is the old library on McLeod, uh, McLeod and the uh, LRT, which avenue is it, 8th or 7th? But uh, that space is also another one of our spaces where we have a public gallery, we have an event hall, we have studios, stud student spaces. So when we talk about um, you know, building and making things, of course, it requires space. It doesn't work uh, just, although some people do build in their kitchen or in their basement, we do provide you with, a, with space where you can do these things. We also have robots um, at the, the, the downtown location and on campus, some robotic arms. There's some really exciting things in terms of where that is leading in terms of construction. Um, and the, the, the digital fabrication lab. And there's information of all that on our website as well. They have Instagram images where you can see some of the things being built. Jen, if there's anything I miss you want to tell me, please uh, just wave and you can interrupt me. So this is the, this is the downtown location, which is we have the main floor where there are spaces and then we have a gallery so that student work as well as other architects and planners and landscape architects get uh, get work. These are some examples of models um, where the, uh, you know, things in terms of the output from students, um, there's a lot of things building, we interact with the city, uh, discussing things. We have some of the city builders coming in, other architects from the, the practicing field. And then this is one where I think this is Marc Boutin, one of our faculty member, uh, you know, some of them are practitioners and build, um, and some are, are, it's very exciting why we have our graduating students who then open their own firms and come back and become colleagues as well. So these are examples. This is the shop, which is more, um, you know, and when we talk about being uh, having an entrepreneurial mindset in terms of what is being done, it's not where you do papers, give it to a teacher who, re who tells you if you have an A, B or C and how it's written. You actually build things. You get to engage with the community. Um, it's quite social because the responsibility is also social. Uh, we build, uh, some of it is speculative where you're working on paper or on your, on your screen and you present your work, but some of it also is built and we have small scale things where things get built, get uh, installed in the public space and you get feedback, but you also enrich people's life through that. So that's where it's really an exciting thing. Um, we have, there are different student groups uh, that, that we have on campus. So it is, as I said before, it is quite social. 
we engage with each other. Um, you work generally, I mean, with COVID now we're a bit uh, different, but we generally, you, you have a studio space, you create a really close community with your colleagues because a lot of learning happens with your colleagues. We also engage with the community we, uh, where you go out to a space and discuss and get them to consider things that weren't. And uh, so there's a whole range in terms of what that is. We also have now one of the things with youth, with climate, with uh, sustainability is very important as is equity. Um, and we have different student groups. A strong one these days is the equity in design education, looking at how things can be improved to make the world more, uh, more make design which shapes the environment, not all of it because there's a lot of things aren't designed by, by, by architects, but uh, that we can make a better difference to be more fair in our world and more just in the things we design, who we pay attention to when we design, how do we exclude, where is the authority in design and why? So there's a lot of questioning go going on to, to shift some of these things. So that's also a, um, really important time. So we, we have, um, I mean, I think for most of you, it's more, you, it's a route as a, from an undergraduate into the graduate program, but we also have uh, with, the, with the technology, we have uh, masters and thesis students uh, in the PhD level that do quite advanced uh, technological research and install it, looking at different aspects, whether it's structural, whether it's material or Sometimes it's just a fun way of responding to an environment. So I did talk a bit about the community engagement. These are examples. So this is our mayor and we do have, we often have exhibits where the work, students work gets exhibited to a lot of uh, different uh, stakeholders from the community and get feedback. Um, we, these are some examples of some of the, the the things we build, we also run design camps in the summer for young people. Again, design thinking is a particular way of thinking that uh, that is quite exciting in terms of just being able to manage different layers of information and coming up with forms and shapes through materials. So this is the number we extremely community, uh, uh, the community engagement is not just us going and learning from the community, but showcasing. So these, I believe are numbers of some of the interactions the, the we have lectures um, also where we bring speakers from around the world that deal with planning landscape and architecture and uh, they come and showcase their work so that we learn and you get the opportunity to learn from that quite an engaged, I think the next slide so we have some, some of the lecture, these are previous uh, speakers for the lecture series that um, runs once a month where we have, I think close to 200, 300 people come in and listen in that get a chance to engage with speakers internationally that are dealing with different topics. Um, we also have another exciting thing is we have a study abroad um, that happens for all three programs. We traditionally had, they, they shift, but we've traditionally, we've had one in Barcelona where students go and spend the whole semester in Barcelona. And we have instructors from there that run the courses there. We have one in Tokyo run by uh, one of our professors, Brian Sinclair, um, that where students go and spend the time there and get to also get to travel around and learn how a different culture and a different context um, and, and get to see some buildings that usually we only get to see on paper. We, we've had one in Tijuana. We have a regular one that our Dean uh, John Brown does in Los Angeles. And again, it's quite in the, I teach in the first year. It's an amazing thing to see people coming back after they've seen the buildings that they've just been studying on paper. We've had, uh, I think planning and landscape, they've had one in uh, Scandinavia. So there's a lot of different exchanges. And right now we have a new curriculum where that happens in the summer and there'll be different opportunities at uh, once the world hopefully reopens uh, in terms of dealing with the study abroad. So that's one of the big, uh, big things. We even have a, the sustainability certificate. I think they have a, a ecology course happening in Uganda this year. So there's a lot of opportunities to explore beyond. Um, 
And this is example of student work when I talk where we build, where we exhibit some of the work and then students, these are examples of installations where they actually, uh, some of the projects and some of the research work with the, the faculty members get built. We've done their projects here, project in, uh, in Edmonton. I don't know if any, I think this one is in the Edmonton Zoo. So that's also another way where if, if you like interacting and seeing your work other than just on your computer, there's a lot of opportunity to do that as you get into the graduate program. Um, this one, I'm not sure, Jen, what, uh, <laughs> I think it's just an example of people's work, the community showcasing our building. There is a 360 tour of our building on the webpage. So if you're interested, if you're not in Calgary or right now with uh, the way the world is a bit shut down, uh, we do have a building. It's, there's a big three-story atrium, and this is an example where we have reviews. So you present, you work, do your work, and we often have a lot of presentations and conversations and we bring people from all over, whether it's in the city, to discuss your work and how, what you're trying to do, what's working, so then you have a chance to rework it. And this is an example where, uh, you know, a class is sitting in the hallway of the building. And so if you, go, you have to go up to your office, you kind of interrupt them and it's a nice interaction. You, we get to expose each other's work and have discussions. So Jen, do you want to talk about from high school to practicing architect? Sure. So um, it's not a direct admit from high school to um, architecture at the University of Calgary. So basically you're going to choose your undergraduate program that you're interested in. And we always advise students pick something you like because your grades are important. And if you put yourself into something you're not going to enjoy, you might struggle and therefore your grades might suffer. Um, so anything goes. So you, if, if you don't come to the University of Calgary, there's other options, but obviously we'd like you to come to the University of Calgary. And the one bonus we have is our minor in architectural studies. So if you take the minor during your four-year undergrad, what that does is save you a year at the master's level because it's the exact same courses as the foundation year of our three-year master's. So and then it's um, a four plus two situation, which you can't do it any shorter in Canada. And you do have to have a master of architecture to become a registered architect. So um, basically you would apply to your program, whichever one that might be. And then in your second year, you apply to the minor. It is competitive. Um, about one in two, one in three applicants get accepted. We look at your grades from your last 10 courses at the university, um, as well as we ask for a small digital portfolio of um, any kind of design or artwork. And we also, we have ways to kind of guide you through that process once you get get to that point. Um, but yeah, and then once you do the minor, you can either stagger it over your third and fourth year. Some students save the whole thing and do it all in their fourth year. Then you can apply to the master and you would be accepted into the two-year program if you were successful. So it's a, it's a great way to, to kind of combine everything and to get a look at what the program is like doing it as a minor, because then you've got the first year under your belt and you're getting that experience. I think these are just helpful terms for high school students who might not be familiar with um, what everything means, especially um, kind of the acronyms that we use at the University of Calgary. So ARST minor might not be intuitive that it means architectural studies. Um, so those are the things you're gonna hear. Um, MARC is, is the short form for Master of Architecture. And then obviously if you're starting to look into applying to university, you've been looking at majors and minors, um, but we just thought we'd share this with you just in case. And you know, oops. So these are the required, these are the required courses that basically create the foundation year. And I'll, I, I think there's a slide coming that shows a bit that structure. These are actually examples from a graphic course that I teach that showcases how we start working digitally, uh, working with Photoshop, embedding a form into that, but also 3D printing it. That's one graphics one. That's one of the things you do in the first semester. And uh, the designing a better world, of course, it's a very important time. It always has been, but uh, right now more than before, we're seeing how the environment, it's not just about going and uh, doing, there was a time where we just walked around and there's an assumption that design, you know, it's like being the, the rich person's uh, 
just making houses for the rich, but there's a lot more. Uh, the environment is a very important one. Um, materials we use, we have a specialist in life cycle analysis, which is seeing how the materials, where the resource of the materials we use in our buildings come, but also where they go. So that, that I think is coming. So those are just small examples of, uh, this is all student work in terms of some of the things. This was re a students, the redesigning, thinking of how to redesign the building that we are in the downtown, not the whole building, but just the surface to upgrade it. These are actually first year students. This is those of you that are in Calgary, this is C space in case you know it, where we did some installations in the cubes in the front. We have, uh, you know, quite a strong group as faculty members, but we also have, in addition, we have as many people who teach from the community, but also internationally, especially now where with uh, this year with the online teaching. So we practice, so some of our architectural faculty member are practitioners, most notably we have here Marc Boutin, who might be, if you know anything about architecture, is a, a, does quite a bit uh, in Canada, but also quite a bit in Calgary. We also, we talk about where we have uh, Josh turned it is, is a book, you know, we do research in terms of some of the books, but uh, some of the di digital technology, but we also have what I was talking where we have the designing out ways to start looking at how we can design and not just most of the landfills we have are a huge amount of it is construction waste. And unfortunately it's not even old construction waste is the, when they're building new materials. We have, uh, Alicia just joined us, who's quite advanced in, in robotics. And so there's this quite exciting in terms of the range of people that you get exposed to. So Jen talked a bit about the minor. Once you get, we have the professional degree, which is the, the master's one. It, yeah, it's three years or some students can come into the first year and then spend the two years. So that's what we call the M1 and M2. Again, those are examples of some structural studies. And then uh, without going too much into detail is there is an underlying foundation is each year you have what's known as a studio course. If you come from an arts background, you would know a bit more, but uh, those are courses again, where it's not lectures. They're like labs, they're like workshops where you're given some parameters, some uh, for different scales of projects and you work, um, the, the maximum number of students is 15 to one in the, in the class. Uh, with an instructor. So each year there is each semester, there's one, then there are some supporting courses and then there are some electives. So you can then choose if uh, whatever your interest is, we give a range each semester where you get to select which courses you want to take that appeal to the, the theme that you are interested in developing the most. So. These are just also another one. We have a work uh, at when you get to the masters. It's I think very exciting. We have a new curriculum where we have the work, what's known one of those studios rather than always being at school. It's called the work integrated learning studio where you actually work. We have different firms and we have small groups learning. It's not an internship, but you are working with the lead from those different practices so that when you come out, you have, uh, you have some uh, experience that starts in terms of going from the academia into practice because in architecture there is the education then you have an internship time you have a where you have to do a, a period of work where you're you're recording your hours there's a structure before you get to do an exam to become a registered architect if not you're really not uh, legally a, an architect you could have studied architecture but you're not technically an architect so so it is it's a, it's a very exciting uh it's a very exciting field i mean for me i i love the from my end the, the teaching part is because as i said at the beginning you can approach it from so many different angles and there is a whether you're a quiet person or or a very uh, somebody who needs to interact there's room whether you're technical or whether you're more creative or whether you're both because we tend to always say we're one or the other I think this is a this is a field that can accommodate not only one or the other but this and that and that and uh, and the opportunities when people come out it's not just going and working in an architectural office there are a lot of things because of the mindset because of the the problem solving because of the 
the the creativity it's a highly creative field in terms of the problem solving people go into all sorts of different back, uh, uh, scales and different things um, in terms of building and i think the last thing is the school itself some of your best friends the students uh, because of the studio interaction the community build there gets quite intimate and people well we have students who get married but also we have create quite a uh, intimate friendship um, that continues and within Calgary a lot of the practitioners they're people I've been teaching for 20 years and seeing as I said at the beginning now they're they are run their own practices they're challenging things they're improving some of the environment we have students alumni that are at the city so there's a lot of uh, different areas where people end up working and we can talk a bit more about that if people have questions so I think that's the uh, the last slide. I'll stop sharing, and then if people have questions, you can either put your hand up, or if you want to put it in the chat room. No, <laughs> <laughs> I have two teenagers at your. They're your age. I'm assuming you're all that age. They they go quiet when I talk to them as well. <laughs> How many students do you accept each year? Well, for the minor, we usually accept around 20, um, 20, 25. So, and we typically get 40 to 50 applications, um, sometimes more, it kind of ranges every year. Um, for the Master of Architecture, the foundation year stream, we look for around 35 to 40 because uh, we will be splitting that class or not splitting it but combining it with the minors so um, it's not as big of an intake um, and then for direct admits um, to the two-year program again it's not a full admit because our foundation year students are moving forward so again it's around 35 40 that we accept last year we had 280 applications for the master's program Maybe we didn't talk, there are, I mean, we showed the numbers, there are a number of undergraduate courses. If you just want to take something to see what the school is about, what this design thinking is about. So we have one that's an introduction to architecture, the ARST 201 that's taught every year. We also have uh, Barry Weiland teaches a studio, an undergraduate studio, which is a really good one if you want to just get a feel for how studios run. And then uh, I think next year we will have one in landscape and one in planning as well. So those would be, if you're still questioning, I think those would be good ones uh, when you're in an undergraduate program to take. I guess the other question, Jen, is people go some uh, people, there is the interior design at Mount Royal that people, that's a design school, but with that, you still have to go into the foundation year. You don't get a, a direct admit. And the other one locally that people do is SAIT. Uh, you can get the, it's more of a te architectural technology and still it's a, it's a good background as a starter, but people do then go in, still have to go into the foundation year when you, they come into our program. And Catherine, do you want to talk a bit about the portfolio um, in terms of the minor? And it's it's a smaller one that we only ask for six pieces, but maybe you could speak to kind of content and what we're looking for. Yeah, I mean, the portfolio is a way to present. Uh, Uh, the grades i let jen answer i'm just sorry i'm reading sean's uh, one but uh, the portfolio just uh, the way we present it is really you're presenting yourself don't assume you have to be an artist or an architect um it it can include a range of things of what your interests are the way you look at so it could be photography it could uh, sometimes we even have writing but it's more also the way it's presented the way the care with which something is put together um, sometimes people think, oh, I'm going into architecture, so I have to know how to draft a plan, and then they spend time drafting a, a plan of a suburban house. That's not really architecture. That's, you know, just uh, showing that you can do that is, would be a small part, but it's more how you look at the world, what you pay attention to, if you're interested in social issues or you're interested in the environment, like starting to put that will show us who you are as a person and the range of things we have 
students who build furniture. And so that becomes a good example or some have done pottery or an art class. Like the making component becomes very important. You're a fantastic cook. You can put a picture of something you've cooked and the way you present it. Like those don't, don't take all that out because that shows your mind, the way it absorbs things, the way it observes could be the way people, you know, we've had fashion, like this whole range of what it means to design at different scales. And we do have the, there's examples of some of the portfolios, but we do also have sessions where you can sign up and get feedback. Um, the other thing I think that for the undergraduate, there are some, one of the groups I didn't mention is there's a very active uh, group of, future design, uh, future FD, the future design, future design futures or future designs of architects and planners. So it's an <laughs> undergraduate group and they run also, they have some, um, some workshops for people to introduce them to think about portfolios or introducing them into different programs. Like uh, we use Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator and things like that, that can help people start to put a portfolio together. So the question about grades, um, basically, typically you're gonna apply in February of your second year. So we're going to look at your courses starting the fall term before that and go back. So if you took five courses the fall before that, and then nothing in the summer and five in the winter of that year, those would be the 10 courses. If you weren't evenly spaced out that way, we would go into the final term to get those 10 grades. And if we only needed two courses out of your four, we would take the top grades from those courses. So um, if that's a bit confusing, um, you guys can always email me and I can explain how that works once you're closer to that time. But you know, obviously it's very important to do well in your first year. Um, maybe not your very first term would be counted based on when you apply, but um, definitely your second term and third term, and that may be summer courses as well, depending on how you do it. I also think for the portfolio, you know, as if you're in high school and you're still developing, you have a few years still, this application happens. There is, if people volunteer or where they commit some time to improve the things that are of interest to them, those are things that are very relevant. It shows engagement. As we said, community engagement is a big thing. We do have, right now it's all online. There might be, I would keep looking at the webpage because we do have some of the student presentations. Uh, usually those are open. As I said, that we have the, the exhibit work, we have this the speaker series and so, if you are serious, just attending some of these, seeing how it is, it shows you what uh, what going through the school is about, but it also starts to expose you to what the field is about. And that will start shaping the way you present yourself when you start applying. I just put our portfolio sessions in the chat. Um, usually it's people who are applying that year to that come in and, and uh, get their work reviewed. So um, if you're, if you're just coming directly out of high school and applying to your undergrad this year, you know, maybe it's not time yet, but maybe you've done a lot of work already in high school. Maybe you took, you know, an architecture course or arts, um, fine arts, and you want to just kind of start to pull things together. Um, we'd be happy to meet with you for that as well. So, um, and we do this every fall. So if you don't need us for that this year, you definitely could, could keep an eye on our website and sign up for future years. The other thing that's happening this year is we have, uh, as I said, usually we have the downtown gallery, but uh, it's not open this year, but we will have in the winter at, towards March, we have an international competition that's been set up on equity and we'll get some of the results and they'll be uh, put up in the window so you don't have to go in the gallery. And also the... Um, when you can go window shopping for design student design projects. So at that LRT station by McLeod, the city one, there will there are some windows across from our building and we're going to start showcasing some student work and some research projects there. And right now there is a design built that's going up in front of the building. So that's something even if you walk by and you see some students building. Um, it's a good, I think, talking to students as you get closer. We have a student association and we always are open and it's, it's a very good way to just introduce, uh, make students talk to each other rather than, than this more formal way of presenting the program. You get a better idea. 
Yeah, and our, our essay is great, and they're offering to always connect with uh, future students. So if, if you'd like to speak with one of our current students, just send me an email, and um, I can connect you with someone, and they just, you know, happy, happy to chat with you, like give you the student's perspective of the program. And we also have some that did the minor as well, so um, they know that, you know, that's an extra layer of, of questions that the student might have. So just get in touch, and we can, we can take care of that. And... Yeah, with this, I know now being online, it's not easy and some people are quieter than others, but please don't just be bold and reach out. It's an email and uh, I know for me, it took me a while to adjust to it, but it is a, we're human and we're here and we're always excited. It's like anybody who wants us thinking of design because I think a lot of us, we're very passionate about it as a way of working, as a way of thinking, as a way of moving through the world and improving it. And we need a bigger community. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, I, I, any more questions? No. No questions. <laughs> okay. Glad it's been helpful. Well, hopefully I'll see, I, I don't, I wouldn't recognize you from your faces because I don't see them, but maybe I'll see you in a couple of years. <laughs> I teach some of the foundation courses and it is always wonderful to see people from when they come in to when they graduate and the way things build up. It's a lot of work. It's not a sit back kind of program. Um, you just have to jump and play. <laughs> Okay. Thanks, Catherine, for that. And thank you, everyone, for coming. And just keep in touch. My email's in the chat. And um, obviously, you can find us on our website, too.